Uh, Congressman, um, last week was very disappointing for many of us seeing Mike Johnson get out of his office, break the vote so that we can get spied on while the borders are open. Um, how do we reconcile that as a movement? Well, thank you. Uh for having me on this morning, John. I'll tell you, it was a very disappointing week. We worked really, really hard. Although I will tell you to actually get to a tie vote on that particular subject um, is really a step forward. And fortunately, one of the small wins that we did get last week was we, we changed that authorization from five years to two years. That means it will be up again for reauthorization in two years when President Trump is going to be our president. And I think we're going to have a different outcome in two years. So I'm, I'm encouraged by that small win right there. But um, but we got a lot of work to do. And uh, uh, we got to protect our liberty. We cannot be, as Benjamin Franklin said, giving up essential liberty for, you know, the hope of a, of, of a small of safety, uh, because those who do that deserve neither liberty nor safety. And, uh, and I'm in that camp right there. I'm in the arena, as you said, fighting to make sure that uh, we preserve what our founding fathers gave us. And we've got another fight going on this week, and, and we're going to be dealing with the border. Uh, and we should be dealing with the border. We're dealing with everybody else's border, but how about our border? So uh, that's going to be a fight this week, and, uh, and we plan on standing strong in winning this battle. You know, Congressman Andrew Clyde, by the way, member of the Freedom Caucus, uh, what I was thinking about uh, when this vote came out and Johnson broke the tie is had the conference not jettisoned out George Santos for no reason, because the guy was not going to run again. He already said he was going to resign his seat. He's been charged with nothing. Had they not kicked George Santos out, you win that vote 213 to 211, because then Johnson doesn't vote, because that would have just been a tie. So, I mean, it just, it's such a comedy of errors. Like, why'd you, like, why'd you guys kick out Santos? Because he was a reliable vote right down the line. This never would have happened. I mean, I just people just have to realize there are consequences to these stupid actions that we do. Well, you know, I'll tell you, George Santos was one of the most conservative voters in all of the, st the state of New York. So when you look at him versus all the others, uh, you know, it, it's the rhinos in New York that literally threw George Santos out. And, uh, and honestly, anybody that voted to throw George Santos out, in my opinion, doesn't need to be in the leadership of the House, uh, not in Republican leadership. Uh, if we would have had him, you're right, the vote would have been different. Um, you know, there were a number of folks that actually didn't vote, and for various reasons, um, some out sick, some, you know, uh, just not being able to be there. Uh, it, it could have been different. We could have won that vote. But this week, we have another shot. We have another opportunity to put our border first and ahead of, of Taiwan ahead of Ukraine. You know, I support Israel. Uh, we're going to vote in support of Israel, but we've, it's got to be done the right way. It has to be done in a financially responsible way. Everything that we do has to be paid for. We cannot be simply borrowing more money and more money and being fiscally irresponsible. This has to be paid for. These have to be paid for supplementals. Andrew, Clyde, why not just go back to Johnson's original proposal, which is you want money for Ukraine, you want money for Israel, fine, but take it out of the 80,007 jackboot IRS agents that are basically hired to go after small business owners and Trump supporters. That's why they're there. That's why they put in the bill. That's why Manchin went for it. We all know this now. We're not dumb, right? They're all against us. That was his original bill. Take it out of the IRS budget, pay for it that way. Why can't we do that? Oh, well, we actually already have, and that bill is sitting over in the Senate right now, and the Senate is doing nothing with it whatsoever. You know, and then they tried again to bring it forward, an Israel bill that wasn't paid for, and fortunately, uh, we, we voted that bill down because it's, again, as I said, financially irresponsible to be sending this kind of money overseas and not have it be paid for. I mean, there's multitude of ways that we can actually pay for this bill, whether it's the inflation Reduction Act, the Green New Deal, the IRS rescissions. I mean, there's a lot of money sitting out there right now that is, is advanced appropriated that we could rescind and bring back and pay for these bills instead of simply having the Treasury borrow more money so we can spend more money and put, and, and put a greater burden on the backs of our children and grandchildren. 
Congressman Clyde, you've also got legislation in now to redesignate the Iran-backed Houthis as a terrorist organization. They were. Biden took them off that list for whatever reason. I have no idea. If you look at the massacres they do in Yemen and how they've been involved there, they're, they're just one of Iran's uh, proxies. How does that look? Well, I think uh, that bill is scheduled to come to the floor this week, I believe tomorrow. Uh, you know, President Trump rightfully designated the Houthis as a foreign terrorist organization. And when President Biden came in, literally a month, within a month after he was inaugurated, uh, this man removed the Houthis from the foreign terrorist organization uh, list. And I think he did that as a olive branch to Iran. Who in the world wants to give an olive branch to Iran? I mean, this is a terrorist sponsor country. So not only did he do that, but when he waived many of the sanctions against Iran, he basically gave Iran a hundred billion dollars worth of, of, of funding. And then you have the additional six billion that he gave them in cash. I mean, this is so irresponsible of President Biden. President Trump had it right. President Trump showed strength on the world stage, but here we have Biden showing tremendous weakness in, in catering to a, to a terrorist country, Iran. And now you see what has happened because of it. They've been able to fund the Houthis, they've been able to fund Hamas, they've been able to fund Hezbollah, and you have this tremendous um, terrorist attack, this, this, this gruesome and brutal terrorist attack against Israel on October the 7th. Directly responsible um, is Iran in this attack. And then, of course, uh, Saturday evening, you have almost 300 drones and, and uh, land, land uh, cruise missiles and ballistic missiles fired from Iran to Israel. Fortunately, 99% uh, of them were taken down and uh, none of them really did any significant damage, although one, one young, one child was hurt from what I understand in the news, which is unacceptable. And, uh, um, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to see what Israel does uh, in response. Explain Biden that he now wants to release Iranian frozen funds. What's that about, Congressman? Uh, <clears throat> this is again more appeasement, appeasement to Iran. Uh, we had some hostages there, as I recall, and this was kind of a deal to get those hostages released. But you cannot be funding terrorist organizations. You cannot be funding terrorist states. Um, that shows more weakness and more weakness. And when when bad actors in the world see weakness, then it invites aggression. And that's exactly what you're seeing. You're seeing it with Russia in Ukraine. You're seeing it with Iran against Israel and the Iranian proxies against Israel. And at some point, if, if we don't change course, we're gonna see this in Taiwan from China as well. So this is a very, very dangerous place to be. So for the president to actually, uh, you know, fund Iranian terrorism through the release of, of, of cash and assets to Iran uh, is, is unconscionable, un, unacceptable, and it is very, very bad leadership. Congressman, I have a minute. Uh, I want to get to uh, the Biden State Department's decision to block small arms to Israel. What is your take on that? I have a minute. Well, that's another example of poor leadership. And then you have, he's trying to extort um, Israel. He is holding up over 50,000 rifles that Israel needs in their war with Hamas. Uh, you know, you've got good United States manufacturers who make weapons for our military that have contracts with Israel. And what's happening is, you know, these contracts have been approved by Congress, but the State Department is slow walking them. They're delaying them. They're putting their foot on them and, and keeping them from being approved. So they, these rifles cannot go to the state of Israel. Uh, and so so we are highlighting that, and hopefully we'll have an amendment in the Israel Supplemental to stop that. Congressman Andrew Clyde, member of the Freedom Caucus, Republican Georgia, 9th District. That's North Georgia area. I want to thank you for being with us today. You can follow the congressman on social media. It's really easy, at rep underscore Clyde. Let me say that.